Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PlanetSide 2 2016 Performance Guide. My name is Sazzy Paz. Let's get right into it. I'm not all about sugarcoating. Before we do get into it, though, I would like to say that I have done quite a bit of testing with, uh, you know, myself, my test bench, and my fellow peers. Uh, so thank you to the lab rats of AOD. Uh, also, this specific system is running an i5 4690K clocked at 4.2 gigahertz. Around it, it uh, decides to like throttle between 4.0 and 4.2. I do have a stable 4.9 gigahertz overclock on this. However, I think the more uh, optimal realm of this would be the 4.0 gigahertz realm of things. Uh, this does work with very bad hardware. I can say this now. This is one of the things I use on my test rig, which has now been destroyed uh an amd a8 5500 uh k i guess if you want to call it that uh, it was overclocked actually to its turbo boost frequency at 3.4 to 5 gigahertz all right it was able to sustain that clock speed and this rig was able to you know do it around 30 fps okay hello team Let's get into the user options that I and I. If you don't know how to find this, all you need to do is find your Planet Site 2 directory and um, scroll on down to find user options, configuration, or I and I. Without sugarcoating anything, use full screen. Full screen allows the system to put the most juice into it, the most uh, uh, resources into that full screen application. That's all I'm going to say on full screen. Windowed applications not only do they have a small input lag but resources aren't being thrown in and you have the uh the, the windows v-sync nvidia v-sync that's being pushed onto it no run it at full screen so you can absolutely make sure there is nothing else doing anything to your game and we're also going to be touching up on the nvidia control panel as well and uh with that full screen you want to make sure your monitor uh is 1920 by 1080 uh, or 720 hopefully you have a 1080p monitor it may not be 1920 by 1080 maybe 1600 by 900 but uh any of these resolutions work uh if you're if you have terrible performance at 1080p 1920 that is the, the best one you could go down to 1600 by 900 and not touch your render quality which is the huge one here this is the huge kicker uh this actually gave better performance results on the amd a8 system rather than the uh the 1.00 render quality this is because the render quality on um in planet side actually can go up to 2x super sampling which is what this is 1.41 uh super sampling all it does is basically it gets the textures at a much higher resolution and uh shows them on your lower resolution monitor so you could say look at a 4k texture and uh look at a much sharper texture on a much lower resolution monitor than you could normally it's uh it's like dsr dynamic super resolution if you know what that is but i highly recommend this it gets rid of the jaggies and the distance and all that terrible stuff uh, it also makes the game look really nice and which allows for you to do these sexy rendering files. I will not be going over the other files because I believe Renzor and a few other great PlanetSide 2 community members have gone over them quite a bit. And uh, this includes sensitivity, this includes, you know, controls, XMLs, etc. You can go see Visigoto's stream for his XML inputs if you wanna be, you know, be, get better. But this is all about getting the best performance uh, in a, you know, okay to, decent system i personally run this i and i i'll have you know so rendering you're always going to want to set overall quality to negative one this makes it so it can never be overwritten as long as you do not touch the uh i guess the settings menu in game so it will not overwrite it will read this and it will overwrite the actual in-game settings it wants to change to to this i and i Graphics quality, it is equal to one. Now you may be asking why that looks bad. I have it set to three in my INI or even two. 
one actually gets rid of all those terrible uh, little fogs, uh, the terrible like little effects. It makes the game, uh, it, it gets rid of all those extras that you don't need. You do not need those extras. Not only does this make the game easier to look at, it makes heads easier to snap to if you're a good player, if you want to become a competitive player. It allows models to be seen a lot more clearer and it allows for a much, uh, much better FPS because the graphics quality is that one, it gets rid of the bloom effects, it gets rid of all that stuff. Texture quality is equal to zero. This is simply because most graphics cards today can easily run Planetside 2 as long as you have a NVIDIA GTX card that is above, I would hope, uh, 660 Ti. Please make sure you have at least a 700 or a 900. If you have a uh, 770 Plus, this includes 970, 980, 780 Ti, 980 Ti, all that stuff, you'll be perfectly fine. I currently have a GTX 760, like I said, and this is perfectly fine. I never hit that max... Uh, texture ram uh, vram threshold i never do in planet side and even don't get memory leaks with this specific ini anymore shadow quality to zero i don't have to explain this this is the hugest cpu killer of the damn game turn it off please unless you want to have that immersive experience most players today are just wanting to play the damn game turn those shadow quality to zero and your cpu will be thanking you in the future lighting quality equal to one who needs lighting? Uh, the game looks great with this render quality. Like I said, the preview uh, video before this, before I got into the desktop, and the video after the intro all use this I and I, and you can see clearly that the game looks good without the high lighting. Effects quality equal to one. Um, I don't understand why the effects quality thing is here, and I'll explain to you why. Uh, I don't really see a difference between one or anything else simply because particles seems to be the effects in this game and I'll explain to that more terrain quality equal three okay so everybody says terrain quality is covered by CPU I don't know I don't know because I had this set to three with the AMD a8 5500 and it was perfectly fine it was perfectly fine and actually at one it yielded worse performance by at least two frames it's not that big of a difference floor quality equal four so this is not ultra floor quality this is floor off you do not need all those little bushes uh to accompany you and walk with you when you're going to the next base the game already looks pretty enough you do not need other things moving clogging up the cpu turn that floor off model quality equals three so this is high this is because you want the models to be seen very much uh it's very easy to see your models let's just say that and uh, it makes it a lot easier to distinguish between TR, Venu, and, and C if you're a new player. It also makes the game just look balls, like, look amazing. You get the te the textures and the guns look great. Uh, you saw the Butcher in the video. I wish Contagia was 60 FPS, but it isn't yet. Uh, hopefully soon. Render distance. This is personal preference, really. I'm an infantry plus a little bit of a really bad dogfighting. But I prefer 1400 on the amd a8 processor unfortunately render distance did sort of impact performance however i managed to keep it stable at a thousand render distance on that processor gamma is personal preference vertical fov personal preference and particles is something a little bit uh different so my cpu right now this i5 is perfectly capable of putting these particles on and particles look really good in this game if you cannot handle particles, if you're already struggling to keep 30 FPS, set this value to zero and set your particle distance scale to 0.11. Not only will this get rid of smoke, it will make you, mm, I guess you could say competitive in a sense because you won't have these stupid effects. Also, you won't have to deal with uh, muzzle, muzzle bloom. You won't have to deal with any of those like little, uh, I guess you could say tracer darts from each faction, the red, the, the white, uh, purple, etc. And uh, I don't know, it just gets rid of the uh, the particles in a, in a sense. So it makes the game look sort of poopy, but if you have a CPU that can handle it, I'd recommend trying this as a baseline and then moving up to particle LED2 and then switching it up to here. I perfectly, ma I, I manage 60 FPS plus with this and I actually have to lock my FPS to 65, which is uh, because this, this specific monitor I'm working on doing this video is not my main because my main is sitting over there downloading a few things. Uh, 
65 maximum fps i just tested it on this monitor perfectly fine uh this is a special for especially for streaming i like to stream and i lock my fps at 60. uh you want to set it to 65 so it's a little bit above so you don't get those terrible uh um, input latency issues at the higher fps's uh, because you don't need a high 180 uh, fps if you can achieve it on a 60 hertz monitor it's just not going to work but uh, maximum FPS is very important uh, in stopping the screen tearing and getting a better input friendly game. Use LOD 0A. Okay, so this is, uh, this is level of detail. This is a little bit questionable. So if you have a graphics card, that's good. I'd recommend putting this to one. It actually yielded better performance on the AMD processor. Uh, but 0, 1, I recommend 1. Bloom, motion blur, and smoothing. Screw the first two that I said. You do not need them. Make the game look like poo. Smoothing, set it to zero. So there's there's debates going around. Smoothing is better. Uh, it makes it so you can see more. It, uh, you know, the FPS is nice and smooth. You don't get any hitching. Here's the problem. If you are used to a specific low sensitivity and you are, you're, you have muscle memory built, enabling smoothing impacted my gameplay by a lot. There was a micro stutter, and and uh, it, it was actually smoothing my twitch movements, which made them slower. So you can't do this in that. It would actually smooth them out, making my sensitivity even slower, which is what I did not want. Anything basic, okay? This is for you guys that have been struggling forever. Okay. So you want to boot up NVIDIA Control Panel here. You're going to right-click on your desktop itself, and you're going to see this boot up here. So the, the driver I recommend for this specific, uh, basically, game, because the most recent one was very difficult. I recommend you go to the December 3rd uh, driver, the 359.06, I believe it's what it's called. I had performance issues in the 361 version. So I, I uh, on, when I had the AMD, I switched back and I saw massive FPS boosts again. So I recommend the December 1st or 3rd uh, driver. Do not download the most recent one. I do not like it. This one's stable. It works. So when you boot your NVIDIA control panel, you want to go to manage 3D settings. This is big. This is big. This is important. When you land here, if it's your first time ever landing here, you're going to want to go to global settings and mess with a few things that you, you understand. But I wouldn't recommend it. You're going to want to go to program settings. So this will only apply when you're running that specific application rather than doing it all of the time. Here you go. You're going to want to select your program. You're going to click add if you do not see PlanetSide 2 and you're going to see uh, PlanetSide 2 play client. You'll add that. This will show up. Boom. All these settings will be inter uh, interlooped and ch changeable. So the key points here are very simple. You're going to want to make sure CUDA is set to all. So, you know, boom, cue to all, just in case PhysX ever gets enabled here. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to want to set maximum pre-rendered frames to one. Not only does this increase your input responsiveness. Uh, so, you know, I had this set to two before on the AMD rig and I set it to two again. And, uh, you know, it, it's awesome because it allows this um, better input lag. But the problem is if you have a low and CPU, I highly recommend this. If you have an i5 like this one, you actually want to set this to one. And I actually recommend you try it if you even have uh, your mom's CPU from a laptop or whatever, or like, you know, your first rig, your first gaming rig, uh, because not only does this allow for smooth, buttery 60 FPS, it gets rid of the little bad input lag, I guess you could say, and, um, Basically, your GPU won't be the input issue here. Multi-display mixed GPU acceleration. I've always done single display performance mode. Uh, it's mostly OpenGL. PlanetSide 2 runs DirectX 9, so uh, I, I've always done single display performance mode. It's only when this application is running in and on the foreground, so you don't have to worry about it. This is the big one here. I've seen massive performance gains from a lot of people from just changing this setting. Excuse me. Performance management mode, you need to set this to prefer maximum performance rather than adaptive. You do this, 
and your GPU will go balls to the walls hard, doing whatever it can to get the most performance out of it, rather than going from you know this clock speed to that clock speed to this clock speed to that clock speed with memory issues as well. Uh, also overclock your GPU to get even better performance. If you're GPU bound, which don't trust that little FPS viewer at the bottom of your screen. <coughs> Texture filtering, you want to set that to quality. Leave shader cache on if you're wondering to. Cache, cache, I don't care. Uh, you're going to want to leave that on. Uh, it just, if you have an SSD, it's caching the things on the SSD and it's deleted after. It's fine. Just don't use sh uh, shader cache if you have like 0.5 megabytes left on your SSD, which you shouldn't anyways, or your hard drive. Don't do that. Everything runs, runs worse with less capacity. I have a mass drive storage device, which has mm, nothing on it. And this SSD, which has only the OS and a few of the applications, which you're seeing here. Set threaded optimization to auto, and you're gonna wanna make sure vertical sync and triple buffering are off completely. Save that, apply, exit, and launch your game.